everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, my name is Haley, and today I'm going to be sharing my September and October reading wrap up. As some of you may know, I have been in a bit of a reading slump these past few months. So between September and October, I only read 10 books, but a lot of them did end up being newer releases, popular releases. So I'm excited to tell you guys all my thoughts about each and every one of them. But before I hop into today's video, I just wanted to let you guys know that I am going to be doing book miss this year. So I will have 12 videos the first 12 days of December, which does mean I am going to be pre filming quite a bit this month. So I will not be posting a ton of content this month, but you will have 12 videos to look for, at least 12 videos, for the month of December. So stay tuned for that. I'm so excited. I have a lot of ideas and there are so many, like right behind me, this whole shelf is holiday books. I love Christmas books and I am so excited. There's a ton of new releases this year, so I will be filming for that. I just wanted to give you guys a heads up in case you're like, you're not really uploading, Miss Ma'am. Anyway, hopping into the books that I read throughout September and October. This is actually the one that I just finished and probably my most anticipated read for fall. I have been looking so forward to this book just because I felt like a kinship with the main character already. This book is The Burnout by Sophie Kinsella and the main character is just completely burnt out. She's taking on other people's jobs at her job. She's just overwhelmed and inundated by emails and life. I think a lot of us can relate to that aspect of the book where sometimes life just feels exhausting. So in this book, the main character takes a leave from her job to a resort that she used to visit a lot when she was younger and she is hoping to just kind of get a little mental reset. She's following like a 20 step program to like reinvent yourself, make you feel like a better person. Kale smoothies, yoga, hula hooping, all that jazz. But it's the off season, this hotel is like in absolute shambles, not at all how she remembered it. She ends up being the only person on the beach with this other guy named Finn, who is just a grumpy, a grumpy guy. It's kind of a grumpy meets sunshine sort of trope here. This book is a little bit on the longer side. It's a little over 400 pages and to be frank, it did not need to be. It did not need to be that long. The first like 70-ish pages I was cracking up, like laugh out loud funny. It's very silly. Like these are not things that are happening in real life, but I don't mind that when it comes to certain books. As the book goes on though, it just continues to get like sillier and sillier and you're like, this is bizarre. To be honest, this one ended up being a little bit disappointing. I felt like halfway through, I was still really engaged in this book and then it just started to get slower. The romance is very slow burn and honestly, not a huge part of this book. I just kind of felt myself like wanting it to end and I wasn't exactly super happy with how all of the characters ended up. I ended up giving this one three stars. It was fun, it was silly. I totally related with the main character at the very beginning of this book. I do wish there was a little bit more romance and there's like a whole side story with like the surf shack that I just was not interested in. It was okay, I wouldn't deter anyone from reading this one but I do feel like it ends up being a little bit slow. And some of the circumstances in this book are just like absolutely bizarre. <laughs> Moving on to The Maid. I ended up doing a reading vlog for this book. This is by Nita Prose. It was so good, so good. It is described as a thriller, but it's not really like thrills and chills. There is a murder in this book and the main character, The Maid, she's kind of wrongfully accused of being part of the murder, but oh my gosh, she is the cutest main character ever. She was extremely close with her grandmother and she has issues kind of deciphering social situations. She doesn't always say the right things and people often misconstrue her intentions or make fun of her, call her a weirdo and that kind of thing. And this book made me cry so much because she does end up losing her grandmother. That's kind of like the whole thing. Her grandmother was always there to kind of like help guide her and give her advice in certain situations. And now that she's no longer there, she's kind of finding herself in a little bit of trouble. But I was so attached to her as a character and there's a bunch of side characters that are just amazing as well. Highly recommend, very cute. Next up, I have Penance by Eliza Clark. And this was a really cool book. It is a fiction, but the whole book is kind of set up like an interview. There was a crazy murder where a group of girls ended up lighting another girl on fire. Just 
letting her die. So throughout this book, you're kind of getting like interviews between a journalist and like the victim's mother or family members, the families of the girls that were the murderers, the murderers themselves, and you're getting all of this deep lore. And if you didn't know, Eliza Clark was an OG Tumblr girl herself. And there are some deep cut Tumblr references in here that are just so niche. If you were really into Tumblr in like the 2010s to like 2016-ish, like you will probably get the references in this book. If not, they kind of, there's like little asterisks that tell you kind of the lore behind it. But it's especially funny as like, an OG Tumblr kid. It really brought me back and it really highlights the uh, mental, <laughs> how do I want to say this? <laughs> Just the chaos that was going on on Tumblr and how people's minds were working. <laughs> Anyway, this one started off a little slow for me. It does kind of go like you get the background of girl A, girl B, girl C, and I didn't really care for girl A that much. She's so annoying. But as we start getting into girl B's story and then finally girl C, I was hooked. It, it was so good and there's just like, even the journalist is kind of like an unreliable narrator in this case. You can't really believe what anyone is saying here. Although this one is definitely gruesome, at times a little bit triggering. I found this to be really fun to read. It was like doing a deep dive into true crime. So if you are big into true crime, you enjoy like a good true crime podcast from time to time, I think that you would really like this one. Next up, I have The Wake Up Call by Beth O'Leary. This is another one that I was really, really excited for. In this book, the two main characters are hotel receptionists at like this quaint little hotel and they absolutely despise each other. Like anytime they work together, they are always bickering and just not seeing eye to eye. But the roof of the hotel ends up collapsing in on itself and they find out that the hotel is having some serious financial struggles and so they are kind of trying to figure out how to raise money to rebuild this hotel and just keep it keep it alive. So they're going through like old furniture and things that they can let go and get rid of and they come across a box of abandoned lost wedding rings and the main character Izzy is like I am going to find the owners of these wedding rings. So they end up kind of collabing and trying to find the owners. They had to let staff go because of financial problems so it's basically just like like these two kind of running things. Obviously, forced proximity. Kind of start falling for each other. And at first, I wasn't super obsessed with the male main character. I think it's Lucas. He comes off very like disinterested. I just really grew to love him and them together. And then you have like the other hotel staff and they're so fun. This was super cute and honestly perfect because it takes place like during Christmas time. So if you're looking for Christmas books and maybe some romance, Definitely check this one out. It was super duper cute. Next up, I have You Again by Kate Goldbeck. And this is another one that I did a reading vlog for. I think it was the same reading vlog that I read The Maiden. But since posting this reading vlog, I have seen so many mixed reviews and some people just do not agree with me. So I loved this book. I ended up loving these characters. It is a little bit of like a time jumpy thing. So they end up meeting each other, not getting along meeting each other years later, not getting along, bumping into each other years later, still not getting along, and then a few more years later, they meet up again and they're still not friends, but they're like, listen, I'm going through shit right now, do you wanna hang out? So this takes place over like 10 years. Anyways, these two originally meet when she is the roommate of his current girlfriend. He comes over to cook the girlfriend some dinner. He's a chef. The girlfriend's not home yet, so it's just her and she's like, so are you are you dating her? What's going on? They find out that they're both sleeping with this girl. Super awkward, obviously not off on the right foot. Through like all the time jumps before they actually connect, you kind of see a series of up and downs, these two going through different relationships and just like different jobs. When they meet again for like the fourth time where they finally decide to hang out and catch up, they're both really down on their luck, like out of serious relationship. So they're just kind of broken and miserable together. The story is kind of like enemies to friends, to friends with benefits, to lovers. I don't know, I just thought this book was really fun. The characters are very snarky and have like very 
big personalities. The woman main character is a comedian and she's very raunchy and I just, I love this book. Moving on to Good Bad Girl by Alice Feeney. This, right off the bat, have to tell you, this is probably my least favorite Alice Feeney book. Starts off extremely slow and at times you're like, I have no idea what is going on. But it does end up picking up. In here, there are two sets of mother and daughter. And the book starts out with a baby being stolen from their stroller. So you know that somehow these four women are connected to this missing baby situation and each other. And you're basically just trying to figure out, it's like a puzzly book. You're trying to figure out how they all know each other, how they connect, whose damn baby is this? It's really heavy on like the mother daughter plot line. Maybe a little bit of mommy issues. You know what I'm saying? It did turn out to be more fun than I thought it was going to be when I first started it. I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna like this one. But it is definitely not my favorite Alice Feeney book. And I don't want to say I was disappointed, but I kind of was. Then I have the St. Ambrose School for Girls by Jessica Ward. This book I read at the beginning of September as well. I don't really remember. <laughs> I guess that kind of speaks to how the book was that I don't really remember it, but I remember finishing it and just being like, yeah, that was a book. You know, I, it just, it didn't really stick with me, obviously. The main character of this one has a lot of anxiety, depression, OCD. I believe she's also bipolar. So she's really in her head a lot. So this girl is just, different. You know, she goes to an all girls boarding school and the other girls just think she's a weirdo. There's one mean girl in particular that really just picks on her heavily, like bullies her so much. That mean girl ends up being murdered. I felt like it ended up being a little bit predictable, but I did like the inner thoughts of somebody going through a lot of, you know, mental health issues. I believe I also gave this one three stars because there were things that I liked in this book and then things that I just really did not care for. Then I have Thirst for Salt by Madeline Lucas. And this one, I, I really enjoyed this book, but I hesitate to recommend it because I absolutely know that people are not going to gel with this one. It is an age gap book where a young girl, not a young girl, she's of age, she ends up falling for a much, much older man. You kind of like get the falling for each other, living life together, going through hardships together, and then ultimately the breakup. And there are a lot of scenes in here that are very poetic. And this is kind of like a dark academia. You have like the artsy girl. I like that stuff. I eat that stuff up, but I know other people read it and it's just like, girl, be serious. <laughs> the other thing about this book is the two main characters with the age gap relationship. I just never felt like there was a huge connection there. The mailman character just did not, did not seem to care either way. Like he was good with or without this girl. I just felt like he did not have any real dedication to her. And it does touch on that. Like that's part of the book, but especially reading about their breakup and kind of moving on after that. It's so sad. Like this man had lived a full life before this girl. And then to her, he kind of was her whole life, you know? But overall, I liked it. I really did. I think that I ended up giving it four stars. Maybe it was three. But I don't want to be like, you need to read this book because I just feel like majority of you would crack this sucker open and be like, what are we doing here? <laughs> kind of like with Cleopatra and Frankenstein. I adore that book, but a lot of people read it and they're like, what in the sad art ho is this? I like the sad artsy girls, what can I say? Next up, I have Final Girls by Riley Sager. And this was a really fun one for October in particular. Main character of this book goes through an insane tragedy where she was at a cabin with her friends and all of her friends were murdered one by one. And she ended up being the final girl, like in a slasher movie. She ends up kind of getting connected to two other final girls who were the final girls in a different tragedy years prior. All three of these are massive stories and they get a lot of attention for being final girls. One of the final girls ends up dying and they find out that it was actually not a suicide like they originally thought. It was 
a murder. So you're kind of going through another like who done it sort of thing, but there were a lot of really good twists in here that I did not see coming. This one was really, really good. I think I gave this one four stars. I saved the best for last. Just kidding. I... <laughs> I did not like this book. Actually, there was one more book that I ended up reading in September, A Certain Hunger by Chelsea G. Summers. No, that was almost as fat of a no as this one. That was kind of like a cannibalistic food critic writer. She Eats Men, kind of like go off queen, but also sometimes books just try too hard to be edgy and weird and that one was just so try hard it, it was really cringy to read and I don't even like to use the word cringy but that book absolutely not which brings me to this book which is another hard no we ended up reading this one in my book club for October because we thought it was going to be a fun spooky read on the back it says that this guy gets a job as the horoscope writer in the local newspaper but somebody else is already writing the horoscopes and these aren't like normal horoscopes they're depicting like gruesome murders or crime they are like basically print these horoscopes only one of them will come true but if you ignore them they're all gonna come true and what do you know they all do end up coming true i have so many issues with this book but i don't want to rant too much basically the horoscopes just ended up being absurd it's kind of just like an episode of scooby-doo not only was it bizarre it was incredibly boring this was a massive disappointment. Ugh, the girlies in the book club ended up DNFing this one, which I really wish that I got to do the same. So that wraps up all of the books that I read throughout September and October. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you again soon. Bye!